Hello and welcome to section 3 of our journey in the powerful world of Go programming. In the previous section, we covered the basic building blocks in Go. In this section, we'll dive deeper into the building blocks of the Go language. We'll start by talking more about Go slices. We will discuss methods and interfaces. Then we'll start uncovering one of the most powerful features in Go, which is concurrency. From there, we'll talk more about how to handle errors and work with them in Go. And then we take a quick tour into Go's various standard packages. We will conclude this key section with starting Operation Hydra, which is our project for this course. We will build the first piece of the spaceship web server, showing how easy it is to write modern web software in the Go language. Now, we start the first video of this section. We covered slices briefly in the previous section. However, there is much, much more we need to cover about slices in the Go language. In order to be a master of the Go language, you have to develop practical understanding of the internal of Go slices and how to manipulate them. We will see that in this video. So let's review ways to declare a slice based on what we have learned so far. As shown, if you already know the initial values, we can declare slices with square brackets, followed by the data type, and then followed by curly brackets containing our initial values. The key is not to have a number inside the square brackets, so that Go knows that it's a slice and not an array. Another way to initialize a slice is the same as before, but with no values included. Typically, this approach is not preferred unless you are sure the values will be filled later to the slice because it allocates memory. The third way to allocate the slice uses a var keyword, which we can use with any variable type. Then we use empty square brackets, which will make it known that it's a slice and not an array. This method is preferred if you're not sure whether the slice will be used at a later time or not. And that is because it does not allocate memory till you start adding data at a later time. Lastly, we can use the make keyword, which allocates memory to a slice and makes it ready to be used. Make allows us to specify the length uh, of the slice as well as the capacity of the underlying array. A very good reference for understanding slices in the Go language can be found in the Go block via the link shown here. Let's first define a slice. A slice is simply a representative of an array or a part of an array. Each slice consists of a pointer to an array element at which the slice starts. The slice also stores its length as well as the maximum capacity to which the slice can expand. So let's clarify what that means in much more detail. In this slide, we see an image of a slice and the array it represents. Again, any Go slice is a representative of an array underneath it. The make keyword can be used to create a slice as shown here. It takes a slice type, the slice length, and the maximum capacity to which the slice can expand. This capacity is the same as the array size which the slice represents. If we don't pass a capacity to the make keyword, the length of the slice becomes equal to the capacity of the slice. The syntax shown here in the first example will create a slice with an underlying array of length 5. So here's our slice and here's our array. This is a pointer which points to the first item in our array and this is the length of our slice, and this is the capacity, which is the length of the underlying array. Now, what if we want to work with a subset of our original slice? We then use the syntax shown here, which will redefine our slice to start from index 2 till index 4 minus 1, which is 3. So our new slice now points to index number 2 of the original array till index 3. Notice here how the original array didn't shrink or change 
This is very important to remember when you're designing your code. In the previous slice, we redefined S to have a length of 2 and a capacity of 3. Length of S is 2 because we defined S to start from index 2 and ends at index 4 minus 1, which is basically 3. So 1, 2, length of 2. The capacity of S is 3 because the underlying array, which S still represents, had three elements left starting from index 2, which is where our redefined slice s has started. In order to get the length of a slice, we can use the length keyword as shown here. And on the other hand, in order to get the capacity of the slice, we can use the cap keyword as shown here as well. We can also use any of those keywords in the subslice syntax between the square brackets, also as shown here. Let's use Go's Playground to play with slices. A here is our original slice. B starts from index 2 and ends at index 4 minus 1, which is basically 3. C starts from the beginning of A and then ends at index 2, which is 3 minus 1. D starts from index 3 till the end of our original slice A. Now let's revisit an important fact about slices. As mentioned earlier, slicing an existing slice still keeps the full underlying array of the original slice. So for example, even though slice B seems to only include the third and fourth items of the original slice, if we try to call the cap function on B, we will find that the capacity of B is actually 4 because B started here and it has access to the rest of the underlying array that A originally represented. If we use a square bracket syntax as shown to get everything in B up till the capacity of B, we'll discover that B was exposed to more than only two items. It was exposed to everything starting from where B started, which was value 3, till the end of the array. If, on the other hand, we use the link keyword in our code, in here, it will only retrieve the part of the underlying array that B was told to look at. However, you can see clearly that the memory underneath is not just those two elements. Now let's explore the effect of having the same underlying array being represented by a slice and its subslice. As shown here, S2 is a subslice of S1, which means changing an element in slice 2 will affect the underlying array of slice 1. So if we change the value of index 0 of S2 to 10, and notice here that index 0 of S2 is the same as index 2 of S1, since this is how S2 maps to S1. And then we run the code, we'll discover that the change we did in S2 got reflected on S1. So that was S1 before we did the change to S2, and this is now S1. The underlying array has changed. This is very important to remember when designing your code. Now is a very good time to discuss the copy function. The copy function is used to copy the contents of one slice into another. It takes a destination slice, then the source slice, and then it returns the number of elements copied. Copy will create a separate underlying array for the destination slice that is different than the original array on the source slice. So if we run the code now, we'll discover that S1 haven't changed even though we set S2 again to 10. And that is because S2 now actually looks at a different array. Now let's show an example of a potential memory leak. So if you create a slice inside a function, as shown here, then return a subslice of it, as in this example, the memory will still keep the full underlying array of your returned value. So if you run this code, 
you actually see that the subslice includes all the rest of the original slice. The solution for this memory leak is to utilize the copy function. So by copying to a subslice, we allocate a new array for the subslice. And then when this function exits, the garbage collector will know that the original array is not being used anymore. We can see here that the subslice only now includes the elements we expect it to have. Let's talk about another very important keyword for slices in Go, which is the append keyword. You can use append to add any number of elements to our slice. We can also use it to append two arrays together. We use the triple dot because this is what is called a variadic function, which means it can take an array or a slice and convert it to a collection of arguments. When you call append, it returns a new slice with all the elements you included in your arguments. You can either reassign it to an existing slice or have it as a new slice. Now let's discuss some remaining tricks with slices based on our new knowledge. Let's say we want to remove an item or multiple items from a slice. The easiest way to do that is to use an append function where we connect the part of the slice right before the items we would like to remove to the part that starts right after the items we want to remove. Same rule applies when removing a single item. So in this case, it will be i and i plus 1. So that means i will be removed from our slice. But what if the slice contains pointers and we would like to delete some items from the slice? This may become a challenge because the memory of the referenced objects will not be released. If we just reappend the slice like this, instead we can use the shown logic. So basically what we do is use the copy function to override the data between i and j minus 1 with the data starting from j till the end of the slice. So this is assuming we want to delete the items between i and j minus 1. Since the destination and the source of the copy function belong to the same slice, the underlying array will stay the same. Only some values in it will change. Now after we're done with the copying, we can do a for loop and then set all the redundant items to nil. We do that so that the garbage collector knows that we don't have more use for the items so then it goes and deletes them at the end we reset the a slice to have the modified length without the number of elements that got deleted which was between i till j minus one if on the other hand we only want to delete an item from a slice uh, which contains pointers we can use uh, shown syntax here so these are two assignments in a single line. So we assign the slice to a modified version of itself where we append everything before the item we would like to remove to everything after the item we would like to remove. This will leave a single item at the end of the slice that is redundant, which we will need to set to nil as shown here so that the garbage collector knows that it needs to be collected. Let's test out removing some items from slice a so we'll remove items three and four so when you append the part of the slice right before the items we would like to remove with the part of the slice right after those items will be removed so we'll assign the append back to a as shown and then we'll just print the new a and voila three and four are not in slice a anymore perfect in this video, we took a deep practical dive into Go slices. By now, you have enough knowledge to write efficient memory safe programs using Go slices.